This is Sienna, and you are listening to the King of the Mountain Podcast. Hi, this is Allie, and you're listening to the King of the Mountain Podcast. It's just a fact of life. Hey, hey, one to the two, two to the three, and the place to be. It's BQ. Welcome to this week's King of the Mountain podcast talking impact wrestling from this past week. Whatever platform you're listening to me on, please hit that subscribe button. The goal on YouTube is 2.5K by Bound for Glory. Right now I'm looking to exceed that, and uh, but, but the goal is still 2.5, but uh, I think 3,000 is actually fairly realistic. But if you are a YouTuber, please give me a thumbs up as well. Leave a comment. All that good stuff. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please give me a five-star review and rating. And that'll help me uh, cut through the sea of bullshit, which is the podcast world. The wrestling podcast world. If you haven't been over to kotmpodcast.site.site, I, up that, I update that site every Sunday with the new episode. I really screwed up this week and totally forgot. So if you're someone who normally checks there, I had a super long, I just finished working 12 days in a row. So I worked, uh, you know, my military job for five days and then I had my reserve weekend and had to do that and then went right back to working another five days. So mentally, I'm super smoked. So I did forget to update the website until like (laughs) three days later. So my apologies, but it's a great site to go to if you, if you, um, you know, I put the YouTube link up and then the Podbean link. So if you're someone who prefers to stream the show, because sometimes I understand YouTube can be a little bit difficult to stream on, you can either look me up on Podbean as a King of the Mountain podcast, or if you go to kotmpodcast.site, you can only stream right off there. If you're looking for another great podcast to listen to, I do recommend the Heelcast. Another great uh, podcast covering GF Dub every single week. And if you're a Facebooker, look up the Global Wrestling Fan Zone. Global Force Wrestling Fan Zone. Sorry about that. Um, it's it's seriously the, the number one place if you're a GFW fan on Facebook. There is a, not, you know, there's not people posting spoilers. And if they do, they give you fair warning. It's, a, it's definitely the best, most professional site on Facebook to go to if you're a fan. So um, definitely check that out. Uh, thanks for writing with me, just like uh, most of you do each and every week. If it's your first time listening, welcome. If you're uh, um, listening to me on a platform where you can leave a comment, uh, you know, please say hi. Let me know who your favorite stars are from the company and all that good stuff. So let's get into Impact this week. And yes, I am a, a flying solo once again this week. Um, let's get, Let's get into this. The first thing I want to address is something something has really gotten into this crowd as of late. This was um I was really waiting for this particular day in the uh taping schedule because I had heard that the crowd uh was really good for it and I don't know what got into these people. Um they're they're chanting, they're just, they're alive. It's completely different than the last set of tapings. I do feel bad for many of them who are expecting Bound for Glory, but hey, you get all the events there in Orlando, so um, looks like Bound for Glory location is going to change, and I think it's a good thing. I think that's extremely positive, but something really got into this crowd, and I wasn't super focused on it, so like last, last set of tapings, I could not stop looking at that group of like four people dead center who were just dead to the world for everything i could not take my eyes off that this crowd was so much improved that uh i wasn't so focused on them anymore i kind of like enjoyed the action so that's why i've really been in love with this set of tapings the greatest moment of my life can't can't wait i know the uh the next show is is the same crowd um i I think that brawl might have taken them out of it a little bit so I'm, i'm curious to see how the show kicks off next week but we'll get to the brawl in a little bit. Opening match of the evening here was Garza Jr. versus Braxton Sutter. And I was super jazzed for this one because, you know, a lot of you know I'm a Braxton Sutter guy. Are you watching one of Braxton's matches? Obviously, they look like they're doing some kind of heel turn here. 
I don't really know what direction they're quite going with it, but um, it's fun for them to keep us guessing. And I think when you guys see him, um, when, when this heel turn eventually happens, I think you guys are going to enjoy Braxton Sutter a lot more because he's a lot more charismatic than a lot of people give him credit for. Sometimes it's very difficult to get over as a babyface, but... You know, I'm not going to compare him to, like, Eli Drake on the mic, but I... Uh, excuse me? You know, verbally, he's, he's very witty, and um, I think he's going to fit into that role very well when it eventually happens. The match itself, I thought, was really good and really solid. It's great when they just kick off the show with a match. You cannot go wrong doing that, especially when it's... You know, I don't, I don't know if you want to call this one an X Division match. Garza does have that style... Um, that Lucha style too. Braxton Sutter has been an X Division competitor, not necessarily maybe uh, fits the mold of the current X Division, but they were using him in the division before. I enjoyed the match, and um, I was a little shocked by the result, to be totally honest with you. I thought um, I thought we were really going to get the turn here with Braxton. I thought we were going to get something like really concrete. I had tweeted out earlier, I had a really good feeling that this match was going to um, pretty much cement where he is going forward as far as a character. And we were still kind of left in the dust a little bit. So um, he ends up losing the match. There was a point where uh, Garza was going to dive on the outside, but he almost hit Ali. And then Braxton dropped him on the steel steps and then... Um, Oh man, what did he hit? Some kind of a power bomb, gut wrench power bomb. I thought, oh damn, he's got a new finisher. Um, I thought the match was over right there, and then he um, Garza kicks out, ends up winning the match, and it just—I mean, it further it furthers the whole Braxton thing where he's kind of frustrated. But I really thought he should have won the match here, um, or I was hoping he should have won the match. I'm not gonna tell anyone how to book. I'm no expert in that ballpark. I really thought he was going to win and we were going to see something going forward with the character. Um, but we did get something in the ring where he um, tried to grab Allie and she wasn't w w uh, ready to go with him. But we know that Allie was part of the slowest burning storyline of last year. So, you know, hopefully they don't go quite as slow with that this time. Uh, hello, Maria? Allie has lost a little bit of momentum on TV because she hasn't been on. And, uh, but I think she's always going to remain over with the crowd. So I'm not super con uh, concerned that she hasn't, since she hasn't been uh, wrestling a whole lot lately or has had, has had much, I'm sorry guys, um, had as much screen time that this isn't going to work. I think she's, she's over enough, but, um, I'm, I'm really curious to see where this goes. I w I thought this match was going to happen last week after the segment happened with them. So the timing is just, um, a little bit off, but. That's the, you know, storyline. He seems to be blaming Allie for the losses. Um, I can't wait to see. this. The, uh, I love these two. So, Impact Grand Championship match, which was uh, Ethan Carter the, the third versus El Hijo de Fantasma. This right here, and I've, I've probably said this a couple times this year. And uh, I've made it, you know, I've always been a fan of the Grand Championship. But this was the best one. <laughs> I've said that a few times this year with uh, various matches, but... This was the best Grand Championship match, in my opinion, that we've got. And when we had the Grand Championship tournament, when the title was first introduced, I thought the tournament was really good because the style of wrestling was different. It was more, uh, you had a sense of purpose. I got that a little bit more with this one. And it's it's crazy because we haven't seen EC3 on TV for shit the last few, like the last month. He beats Moose for the title. Cuts his great promo after where he's holding the belt like it's his date. And then we just don't see him. We just, you know, a couple backstage segments. But, I mean, this has got to be the longest we've gone uh, without seeing EC3 wrestle in, since he's debuted, I feel like. Um, or at least having some kind of important uh, spot on the card uh, promo-wise or something. So, kind of awkward we haven't seen as much EC3. Phantasma is excellent. And at first, as as random this as this match kind of was, and it could have easily been, you know, uh, I don't want to call it a squash, but it could have been a kind of a showcase match for EC3 if they really wanted it to be. It was very competitive. I think we're getting kind of tired of the the split decisions. This is Gail Kim's fault. 
you know, at least when Aaron Rex wrestled with the title, he lost most of the rounds in in the, his first few matches uh, after he won it. Uh, even with Baron Dax, he lost like the first two rounds, and then he got the win, the pinfall victory. So they're not giving us a whole lot as far as that goes. I mean, there's different things you can do with the outcomes, but they're sticking to a formula, and that's where it's not quite clicking. But but this match was really good. I thought again, I really thought it was the best one, and I was happy they kept Phantasma around. For this set of tapings, but I want them. I want them to do something with him too. With that being said, Hector Garza, or Hector Guerrero, I'm sorry, is um, one of the judges for this, and he's the, he's the deciding judge. And when it comes down to the decision, he gives it to EC3. Now we get some character progression where Phantasma goes outside and is arguing with Hector, and Hector's from his company, so. This is this is really getting interesting all of a sudden. Then he goes in the ring, and uh, Pagano shows up, and then they start beating EC3 down, which is crazy because now we got a bunch of heels in the ring together, and the AAA guys are beating on EC3. EC3 is not a babyface. The babyface Eddie Edwards comes down to make the save. So now things are interesting. This is an interesting dynamic. So. You guys heard me say, I hate when we get like a two minute match for the sake of um, carrying on a storyline. I always say, why can't we just get a nice match and then further the storyline after? Why does it always have to be one or the other? This time we really got both. We got a really good match and then we got a really interesting uh, post beatdown. And I'm really excited to see where this goes. Because uh, Phantasma was a, a baby face. Now they're, you know, doing a heel thing with him. But EC3 is a heel. Yeah, Eddie comes down. He's not really too uh, appreciative of Eddie. So this is going to be interesting. It, it, it really is. Now we get the uh, tag team title match in, at the crash. And they promoted this as a two two team match. OVE versus LAX. And they ended up making a four-way. Of course, they couldn't promote it as a four-way because the American fans are not necessarily familiar with the other two teams. Um, I'm sure many are, but I'm just saying, you know, the average fan. This was done really well. The first time they did something like this was when the uh, Hardys wrestled uh, Super Crazy and whoever his partner was for the uh, Crash titles. And I didn't think that was... I didn't really enjoy that. I thought the whole expedition of gold thing with the Hardys was pretty cool, but it kind of took them a couple matches to get their feet wet as far as how are we going to chop these matches up and deliver them on TV. And with the Hardys, like, they were really, really quick. This one was a lot better done. And I didn't think they were going to show the whole match. It would have been kind of cool if they did, but I didn't totally expect it. But it's kind of cool that they do it like this because it's almost like the way they chopped up the final deletion. So they're kind of, they're doing something very, very different when they do that. And they're showing a lot of the good, the good highlights. I want you there in the front row when I win. I don't want to. This was, this was cool. I, I think my, um, my problem with it was that, uh, man, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong here. I didn't help. Didn't know OVE take the loss in this one or was one of the other guys pinned. You guys are gonna have to let me know if you're uh, the, on YouTube in the comments. I thought OVE was pinned in this, but my whole my whole issue with OVE right now being in in the title picture is that LAX is just running through teams so quickly. It's gonna be very difficult to give them uh, very worthy opponents down the line. You know, if they keep bringing in people from other companies, that's that, that's cool. But they just it did just appear to be running through everybody, and it's. You know, there's really no slow burn when it comes to LAX steamrolling people. And uh, but this was fun. This was good. Uh, OVE, they're a little awkward though. Um, the, their their moves are great. Just every time they open their mouths, it's it's really awkward. It's very uh, shut your mouth. It's very white boyish, <laughs> and I don't mean that in a racist term. I'm, I'm the most whitewashed Puerto Rican you ever meet. Um, but it it just it's just like. Uh, it's just awkward. I don't, I don't know how to how to quite um, 
narrow that down, how to pin it down. But but they're a great team, and we'll see what happens with them going forward. Obviously, they're going to have some kind of a straight-up match. But it was nice to see the Crash get involved because they're always talking about Noah. They're always talking about AAA, and it always seems like Crash is, is kind of the bastard stepchild. So it was really nice to see them get involved this time around. We get Grado versus William Weeks. William Weeks is great. Um, I, I find his uh, <laughs> just facial expressions and his <laughs> just the overall overall way he carries himself hilarious. Uh, and I talked to him a little bit on Twitter in the DM, and he said, you know, I, I work with what I got, and uh, I can I can appreciate that. He know he knows what works for him. So I don't know if that I've ever seen Grado win a match. Um, I think I remember him beating a. Uh, he like Drake a couple times with like roll ups because usually a Grado wins. It's um, you know he's like bending down behind someone, they trip over him, he rolls him up, you know that that kind of shit. But I've actually never seen him hit like a finisher or um, <laughs> anything like that. So William Weeks jumps him before the match, and then uh, Grado uh, turns it up a notch, hits the boot, and gets the win. This was an example of what I talked about earlier: the real quick match, and then further the storyline. So Joseph Park comes down and says he has uh, big news and he opened up a sports management division and he is he's going to sign Grado as his first client and he's going to be there on a work visa. Uh, I don't really know how work visas work, but how come he doesn't have a work visa to work for Global Force Wrestling? You got you, So maybe someone can enlighten me on that. I, I guess I'm kind of ignorant to the process, but... That's just the first thing I thought. If this was uh, what they were building to this whole time with LVN, like this was super random. Uh, my wife had said she thought Joseph Park was going to turn on him because it just seemed like surely we're going to get something, some something here, some kind of payoff. And it seems like they drag us through the mud with this whole thing the entire time <laughs> just for, for this outcome. So... Maybe the storyline's not done. I mean, um, I, I, it gives uh, Joseph Park something to do so he doesn't have to be, you know... Uh, Abyss is, at this point in his career, best used, you know, sprinkled on lightly. So, I, I, they, they have a good dynamic together. They're pretty funny together. And, um, I don't know, maybe this just goes forward, but it was, it was just, it was a little random for me. Um... J Lashley and American Top Team yeah, yeah. meet with Jim Cornette. And uh, he asks for his release that he's going to go back to MMA. And Jim Cornette says he wants to see him and Lashley, or him and Moose, face to face in the ring later. I didn't understand this at all. And the reason I say this is it looks like they're, they're, they've been trying to build up some heat between Moose and Lashley, but it hasn't come over. Um, to the t on the television product, and it certainly hasn't come over to the live crowd, because um, after Mass Sidal beat Lashley and they did the gauntlet for gold, uh, Moose eliminated Lashley, and I think they were trying to get that over as um, starting some heat between the two of them when he hit that drop kick and kicked them out. But this this shit has been so focused on Americans' top team. <laughs> That it completely overshadowed anything going on with Moose. They've been dominating the screen so so much. There's one guy in the group who's a horrible actor. I mean, uh, Dan Lambert and the other guys seem to do a good job. There's there's this one guy. I don't know if you know who I'm talking about. At the beginning when they jumped the guy backstage, he kept like pointing and laughing at him like, ha ha. Um... And then he was making some kind of facial expressions in the office too, and I, he like I couldn't take my eyes off him. But um, the other guys do a good job. However, they they really shoved this down our throat, and I think it was nice to get a break from it last week. And at first, I liked where it's going, but now I don't care as much. Um, I I just think because it was it was just shoved down our throat. And I wanted to see, you know, we had storylines like Braxton and Garza where they could have easily found time for that last week or the week before, but they kept putting it off because, you know, you got segments like this that they feel the need to, to do every week. But I'm curious, I'm still curious to see where it goes, but it's not doing a whole lot for me right now. But to going back to what I was saying about Moose, Moose eliminates him and then 
at Triple A, I think Moose eliminated him again at, at Triple Mania. And when they did the Triple Mania package last week, they tried to talk about it and say, uh, you know, Lashley's like, oh, my own teammate eliminated me. And I think based off those two segments, they were trying to get heat over to the audience, but, but we didn't feel it. And the Impact Zone audience had no clue what was going on when it comes to these two. So really random to me. And maybe it's a problem with them. Um, you know, doing so much tape programming that you, when you can't adjust on the fly and improve certain feuds, like you, you kind of get stuck with what you got. X Division title was on the line, false count anywhere, Sanjay versus Trevor. Sanjay's been, been looking a lot better lately. I'm not saying he hasn't always looked good, but when he made his return, I really wasn't buying into him a whole lot. Um, I, I thought the two matches with low key lacked any kind of drama or chemistry. You know, I've said several times I didn't enjoy their match at Slammiversary at all. And then uh, when he won in India, that didn't do a whole lot for me either. But uh, in, uh, the Amped Anthology, when he wrestled Jigsaw, like, he was really good. And uh, the last few times Sanjay's been in the ring, he's been doing a really good job. I kind of uh, predicted Trevor Lee would win this one because... Sanjay does have a backstage role, and there's only so much wrestling and so much defending the title he could do. And I thought this was the right time because we're getting so much character progression with Trevor Lee. And, I mean, God, he was so handcuffed with Helms the last couple years. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we just we just didn't see this coming as far as uh, how charismatic he, he could be. And I'm not familiar enough with his indie work um, other than the actual work itself, but... Um, you know, I don't know how much charisma he's shown. I know he's shown some humor, because um, I've I've seen some clips of it. But I like this pairing with um, with Caleb Conley a lot. He really give finally gives Caleb Conley something to do. And I think I think they made Caleb suicide because I mean they had him on the roster for a long time and didn't use him. And I almost feel like they say, hey, was, we're gonna give you the suicide character also. So we can make up for all that lost time. And he gets a few more paychecks in there. Maybe with Trevor Lee, I would imagine there's going to be some kind of rematch. I don't know. There was the ladder match, this match, you know, I don't know where else they can go with it. But maybe we start re, um, readdressing the situation between Andrew Everett and Trevor Lee. Because I really feel like Sanjay and Loki kind of came in and took the... Uh, took over for Andrew Everett. And I feel like that's where a lot of Helms' problems were when he when he you know was let go and he's been a little fucking bitch ever since. Um you know continues to be obsessed with the company and tweeting about about things, you know, uh, he said Johnny Impact shirt looked like it was made with Microsoft Paint or something. But I think he had some issues when Sanjay came in and perhaps low key and they kind of took over the div division when Andrew Everett was obviously being built up. So maybe they, maybe they readdress this. Um, DJ, DJ Z is coming back too. I just don't want to see a DJ Z, Andrew Everett and Trevor Lee thing going on because we got that at Bound for Glory last year and we got it at Slammiversary last year. So that whole dynamic, I don't want to revisit that. And then, of course, Desmond Xavier, I mean, he wins a Super X Cup. We get a video package on him, but, I mean, we haven't seen him since. And he's the guy we really want to see in the mix here. So, but decent match. Um, so I like when Sanjay jumped off the wall and hit the DDT. And uh, at the end, when he rolled up Sanjay, he almost hit his head on that pole. So, <laughs> it was a close one. But he used it to uh, gain some leverage, and then he gets the win. So let's see what Trevor Lee does this time around. His first two reigns weren't that fun, but, but, um. Are so effing annoying! This is Gail Kim's fault. Taya Valkyrie has a, uh, one-on-one -on -one match with Amber Nova. There's a lot of confusion. Amber Nova is not a knockout. I believe she lives locally there. So she comes in and does the jobs. And it's, it kind of sucks because it's almost like, um, girls like Alicia, MJ, uh, I think Ava lives there, but I know like Alicia and MJ, it, it's almost like they get penalized for not um, living in the area. 
And I remember MJ moved, so maybe she did move down to Orlando. But it just seems like Amber Nova's getting more time than a lot of these uh, a lot of these gals are. Amber Nova doesn't have a lick of body fat on her. <laughs> uh, Taya is uh, she's a thicker thicker girl, thicker gal. But the two of them next to each other, I mean, she looked huge. I don't mean huge in a bad way. I mean, she just looked like a monster. Um, it, yeah, just I couldn't take my mind, my eyes off that. Just, just, just a weird visual. But it's a very quick match. Um, I, I like the power bomb that Taya hit. I thought she was going to end the match. Pulls her up and then um, hits the implant buster and gets the win. So it was good to finally see Taya. I feel like her entrance was a little bit different this time. I, I like the last one. But good, uh, good entrance, good music, and she's just she's a great person to add to the, the division, and everything that she has said and Johnny Impact has said um, off camera is that she's extremely excited to be there. Um, she seems to be close with a few of the girls. There are new fresh matchups with her, new audience, and um, she's really excited to be there. And Johnny Impact, you know, basically said, "Happy wife, happy life." She's super tough. Where, what are we going to see with Taya going forward? I hope she gets a, you know, they're building up to, um, you know, uh, maybe Rosemary, Gail, Kim, Ali. Don't don't quite know what they're doing yet, but I think the, the knockouts division is a lot of fun right now. With that being said, after Bound for Glory, um, I really hope they find a way to get some of these other, uh, you know, other, other girls into the mix. Um, I know most people want to see more MJ. I'd like to see more Alicia personally, uh, but we'll see. Main event of the evening was the number one contenders match for, I guess, Victory Road. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't Victory Road the name of the uh, knockouts knockdown pay per view this year? The one night only. I could have swore it was knockouts knockdown Victory Road. And now we're getting Victory Road again. Kind of odd. Johnny Impact versus Loki. I've said this every time with Loki. Ever since he he left the company, I I check out when he's out there. Um, I watch him and and. Wouldn't mind him sticking around. And they confirm in a conference call that he was done with the company, but that it was very amicable. He left on a very good note, shook everyone's heads. So it was one of the most positive experiences of his career and that the door is open for a return. Um, I lo I'd love to see him come back. I just, I'm upset that they had him join LAX and only for him um, to be done. And what where's, where is that going to go? And we're still getting a whole... Jesus Christ, a whole month and a half <laughs> of low-key with LAX. I remember last year when, when Rude and EY left at the beginning of the tapings, I really didn't want to watch them anymore on my screen. Uh, it just Once you know they're not there, you just it's just not fun. And uh, I haven't, um, God, I haven't watched an NXT in so long, but uh, my last episode I ever watched had Alex Riley on it because he was like my favorite. Um, I, I, I've always liked him. Once I knew he was done, I kind of stopped because he was the last person I was holding on to. And, but, um, reason I bring that up is I remember, oh God, what was his name? CJ Parker, maybe. Um, he left the company and I remember he was on the next like four episodes and it's, uh, it, it's just something about that where you just kind of see this guy who's not there and you just don't give a shit. So I really, um. I, I really got nothing for you <laughs> regarding this match and uh, analysis, but you know I, they got some time, and uh, Johnny Impact gets the win. He didn't he didn't hit uh, Starship Pain very cleanly, but uh, he he did hit it. Um, it's kind of like the Jeff Hardy Swanton now, where pretty he pretty much just hits you at the back of his head, and that's supposed to pin you. That's kind of where I felt with this um, with this maneuver this time around. But Loki, so uh, not Loki, but Johnny Impact's the number one contender going into victory, victory road in two weeks. After this match, um, I was okay with this being the main event. I completely forgot um, that, well, Eli, Eli Drake came down, you know, hits the gravy train and everything. But I completely forgot after this that that uh, Lashley had a talk with, with Moose. Um... I didn't like this at all. I I I I mm. I was this was a good episode. I mean, there was a lot of pretty decent action. It wasn't dragging around. I thought it was all formatted really well. 
But after that match, I was kind of done. And, like, I just felt like it was time for the episode to be over. And and I, I just, I don't understand where, they, where they're going with this, with the Moose and Lashley thing. I, I talked about it earlier. I don't think they did a good job of building up the heat for it. Uh, I think they were trying to build heat with American's top team. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's not working. Um, the crowd was, you the crowd was, did, didn't like this. They were bored. And this was a pretty hot crowd for the, ep, for the episode. Um... It just seemed like they were kind of bothered that the wrestlers were in the uh, audience. And I can relate to that. So, I, I've said before, there's two promotions out here. Glory Pro and NWL. Uh, NWL. Glory Pro is the real popular one that Michael Elgin runs. They bring in real big names. Um, really big crowds. It's really hot. Really hot crowds. But what I don't like about it is that they wrestle into the audience a lot and glory pro crams all their chairs together because they want maximum people in there so the wrestlers it's nothing for them to jump through the ropes and do dives and 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 land into the crowd and and the uh, chairs and you know i was uh at one show with my old lady and sammy callahan (laughs) he points at my wife goes move and she and she got up out of her seat and he whipped his opponent into her chair and then I go to NWL, which is, um, I mean, it's a fraction of the crowd. It's, you know, 150, 200 people, but it's, it's more fa- for, uh, family friendly. I don't have to worry about getting out of my seat. <laughs> um, I can just sit there and enjoy the show. And that's, I like that better. I don't like having to get up out of my seat for the wrestling. That's just me personally. I think that bothered a lot of people. Um, there was the one girl. <laughs> right, sitting right behind them like vis- visibly bored she looked like a teenager probably didn't want to be there period um, but that was bad for TV to see something like that and uh, I thought it just made an, a solid show just lose a couple points because I just don't think the crowd cared and I think it went on way too long and I don't understand where they're going with it, which is fine. Cause as I said earlier, you like to be kept guessing. I just didn't get this. I, it, it wasn't fun for me at all. I didn't like it, but overall episode of impact pretty solid. I've, I've just loved this set of tapings. I've been in love with them. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying the green ropes guys. I know some people don't, I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. I think it's, uh, Kind of takes you away from the crowd a little bit. So you're not focusing on so much what's going on behind the action. But um, I like it. And we are building for Bound for Glory. So um, short podcast today. I'm trying to really do my best to uh, make these a little bit quicker. And when I get back to having a guest on, I'm still going to try to try to make them a little bit quicker. I've tried to, to shore in the openings quite a bit. And since I do so much other content on the YouTube channel... I'm able to talk about a lot of the news and and things like that, not factor it into the show and just give you a quicker analysis. So I hope you guys enjoyed impact this week. I want to know what you guys thought of it in the comments and uh, thank you for listening. Once again, uh, please hit the subscribe button on any and all platforms of the King of the Mount podcast. And especially on YouTube, trying to get to that 2.5 K, hopefully 3000 by bound for glory. All right. Thanks, folks. Thanks for swinging by. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.